God, for your righteous judgment that will intercede and touch those that need to be touched. And Father, we pray for the families that lost their loved ones during this time, God, during this tragedy, Lord God. We pray for the children. We pray, God, that you comfort them, God, that you comfort the families, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, that they look at this as an attack from the devil. God, that you didn't bring this. You didn't take their family. It was the enemy that came to steal. But Lord, we pray, God, that you touch those families, God. That you touch the children, Father. That you touch their wives, Lord God. That you touch the mothers, Lord God. That you touch the fathers, Father. God, in the name of Jesus, touch them, Lord God. Comfort them right now, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for your comfort. We pray for your comfort, Lord God, that you send forth your comfort, God, that you give them peace of mind, peace in their mind, peace in their heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. So, Lord God, we thank you and we praise you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you will do it. We thank you, Lord God, that you're going to place your hand in the midst of all this turmoil, in the midst of all this calamity. God, that you will place your hand, God, and you will send forth your love. You will set forth your peace. You will send forth your comfort. God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, Lord God, we thank you and praise you, Lord God. God, we pray, Lord God, that you just have your way on this tonight's service. Father, we surrender all to you on this evening, Lord God. God, we surrender all, God, that you speak to us, you encourage us, Lord God. Father, that you give us wisdom on how we will, how we will minister to our community. Lord God, you have opened the door for us to minister, to show forth your glory, to show forth your love, God. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. So, Lord God, blow on us, Lord God. Give us the wisdom, Lord God. Give us the wisdom, Father. God, that wisdom that comes from you, Lord God. God, as we go out to the streets, Lord God, and as we comfort the individuals that have been hurt, the individuals that have been attacked, God, God, that you give us the means to show forth your love to our community right now in Jesus name Lord you said that we are the light of the world so Lord God let your light so shine through us God you said that we are trees planted by the rivers of water Lord God let those that are hurting be able to come to us and feed and feed on to the fruit as we walk in the fruit of the spirit God in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah God, that you will get the glory, Lord God. That you will use us for your service, Father. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you and praise you, Father. God, as you give us wisdom on how to reach our community. God, as you put the place your love on in our hearts, God, so we can hug those that need to be hugged, so they can feel your presence, so they can feel your glory, God. God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray that through this situation, God, that you will draw them closer to you. Oh, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, that you will draw them closer to you, Lord God. Father, we thank you and we praise you, God. We glorify you and we give you praise. Hallelujah. We give you praise and glory, God. We thank you, God, that you will do it. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. So, Lord God, we cry out to you, Lord God. Father, we open up our mouths and we cry out to you, Father. Oh, God, we cry out to you, Lord God. God, we cry out to you, Father. We give you praise. We give you praise right now. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Lord God. We give you praise. We give you glory, Lord God. We worship you, God. We give you all the honor, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah. Lord God, as we touch and agree and come on one accord, Father. And we thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, that the works of the enemy shall be just destroyed in your name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Father, in this place tonight, God, you taught us in your word that you are the Prince of Peace and that, God, you would release peace that surpasses all understanding. God, if we ever needed peace in our lives, peace in our community, we need it now. God, I thank you for filling peace where there was anxiety. God, people who couldn't sleep at night, people who were afraid, God, to let their children go to school today. God, release peace. Release a peace that reminds us, God, that no matter what the enemy does, you're still God. Release a peace that reminds us, God, that we don't have to now all take up and find weapons, God, to protect ourselves. But that, Father God, you are the God who protected us before the tragedy, and you're the same God who protect us after it. God, that, that your angels are still encamped about us. Hallelujah. Keeping us from all hurt, harm, and even danger. Thank you, God, for being there, God, when nobody else is around. Speaking to us, God, when no one else can seem to get through to us. God, you are faithful. Hallelujah. You're faithful, God. You're faithful, God. You remain the same yesterday, today, and forever. What a faithful God we serve, oh God. What a wonderful God we serve, God. What a what a mighty God. What yes, you are, God. I, I dare not let anybody say that you're not who you say you are. You're still mighty. You're still wonderful. You're still Savior. You're still good. And Father, I pray tonight, God, that in times like this, that Everybody across this city will do what the Bible says. Teach us to number our days. God, help us, God, to not, Father God, ask where are you when things go bad when you have to ask where are us when things are good. Help us, Father God, to not miss one day of giving you praise. Help us, God, to never wake up without starting our day by saying thank you for opening our eyes. Hallelujah. God, we are more appreciative of your presence than we've ever been in our lives. God, help that God appreciation and thanksgiving to never go away. Because God, thanksgiving is how we enter your gates. You said, enter your gates with thanksgiving and enter your courts with praise. And so tonight as a church, God, we, we thank you for giving us this another opportunity. Thank you for giving us another chance, God. And we thank you for allowing us to, to pray together, God, for not just our city, but those who are making decisions. God, we don't want this thing to go from bad to worse. So we need people who have the mind of God, who have the wisdom of God, that will learn how to de-escalate situations instead of making the situation even more dramatic than it has to be. We lift up our government officials. We lift up those, Father God, who are in charge and making decisions right now that will determine what these next few days look like, God, what these next few weeks look like, God. We don't want our community to become a police state, Father God. That's not what we need in this time, God. We need more prayer. We need more, Father God, understanding. We need more We need more of you, God. People may not want to say it out there, but we can say it in this church, God, that Jesus, you are the remedy, God, that you are the one who can heal the broken heart. God, you are the one who can, Father God, Father God, you can do it all, God, that Jesus, we can say it boldly in this church, God, that you are the way, that you are the truth, and you are the life, God, and so tonight we thank you for being connected to the vine, hallelujah, we're connected to the vine, God, that's why we can still, Father God, find rest in the midst of the storm, we're connected to the vine, God, that's when, why other people are confused, God, we have an answer from on high, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being our Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. Would you just stand for a second and grab somebody by the hand as we... Hallelujah. As we... Amen. Hallelujah. God, because we just want to be connected. And we give you a corporate thank you. 
Amen. Thank you for the hands that I'm holding right now. Thank you for my brother. Thank you for my sister. Thank you for their lives. Thank you for their destiny. Thank you for their future. Thank you for how good you have, you have been to my brother and sister and how good you will continue to be with them. Lord, we are a body, Father God. We are a family, God. And we thank you for, God, what you're doing in us, through us, and for us. Tonight, God, we simply say, have your way. God, because when you have your way, things always turn out better. <laughs> when you have your way, Father God, you the miraculous is released, God. When you have your way, Father God, we, Father God, weeping does endure for a night. But when you have your way, joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. God, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But when you have your way, you deliver us out of them all, God. God, there are many weapons that are formed against your people. But when you have your way, no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. God, have your way. Have your way in everything that's going on now. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. And as you do, we'll be very careful. We promise to give unto you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. Thank you, Lord, for doing it, even now. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let those hands go and give God some praise in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, I feel better when we praise him. It's... I feel better, so much better. Something about praise is something about worship that just shifts the atmosphere. Amen. Do, do me a favor before you take your final seats, would you hug two or three people? Just tell them you love them. Times like this is just good to let some people know I love you, man. Amen. I just love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. Praise, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just love you. Love you, love you. God is so good, and he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Just good to know. Facebook Live family, y'all, the type that I love you. Amen. Just spread the love, even on social media. Amen. I love you, I love you, I love you. Amen. I love you. Hallelujah. 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 God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Well, listen, family, of course, I'm not going to um, dig too deep. Uh, but, you know, of course, tonight, you know, I'm so grateful that, that all of you are uh, okay. And, you know, yesterday, because I know we have some people watching and, Yesterday was very, very traumatic uh, for so many different reasons. And, you know, right now, um, tonight, I'm not going to jump into it. Uh, I'm going to be dealing with it uh, Sunday because, you know, we're, we're, we're prayerful. One of the things I've learned to be is prayerful. Um, sometimes you can respond too soon. Uh, so we're just hearing the voice of God as a church and just, you know, praying about what, what would the Lord have us to do as a ministry in a times like this. But... You know, I heard somebody say, man, I'm tired of people praying. Well, that's because you don't know the power of prayer. Amen. Uh, I said it on my, my live feed today. You know, I think, you know, after we pray, there are some actions that we need to do. But you listen, don't ever discount the power of prayer. Amen. Uh, and so, you know, whether you receive prayer or not, I'm going to keep praying. Amen. Uh, somebody said they should have put prayer back in schools. Well, as long as I'm in the school, prayer never left. Amen. Because you might not pray as a class, but I'm going to be praying over there by myself. Praise the Lord. So so we're going to be prayerful. But I just want to put that out tonight because I know normally when we come, it's like when something like that happens, uh, you know, I like to address the elephant in the room. But I just want to give you a heads up that, you know, I'm really, you know, it's amazing. God put something in my spirit for Sunday before all this happened. And as things transpired, everything he put in my spirit for Sunday, I said, now I get it. Holy Ghost. So. So I want to encourage you, be here Sunday morning. We are going to speak to our city Sunday morning from this pulpit. God always has a word. Amen. Amen. But tonight I just didn't really feel like it was time because there's so much still happening. But I think by the weekend we'll have a clearer picture 
uh, what's going on. But uh, once again, I just want to say to those that are watching us tonight, because a lot of people have been sort of checking in with me, that we're praying for our city. Uh, I told somebody, I love my city. Amen. I love my city. Amen. Because, you know, people are quick to, to start talking negative. You know, I can't wait to leave Jersey City. Nah, listen, I understand how we can feel that way, but uh, I love my city. I've been called to this city. And, and, and somebody said, well, how can you love a city? I said, well, how can you serve a city you don't love? Amen. And so I've been sitting here on assignment. Amen. And, and we're talking about being the light. Come on now. I mean, light shines best in darkness. Amen. And so I, I look at these things as opportunity for the light to shine, amen, because I still believe God can turn everything around because he turned me around, praise the Lord. And, and y'all don't know, y'all pastor was a mess, amen, but God got a hold of my heart, man, and, and I'm here tonight and pastoring you because God got a hold of my heart and he made some changes in my life. Don't you tell me God can't change nobody. If you, if you don't believe God can change somebody, you ain't better change somebody. Y'all heard what I said? If you don't believe God can change somebody, you ain't better change somebody. I'm going to change somebody so I know what the Lord can do. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Matter of fact, you have to bless God right then one more time if you believe with me that God can change things. He can change people. He can change cities. Come on here. He can change communities. Come on now. He can change states. Come on here, somebody. Our God can do it. I know he can. I feel the Holy Ghost. I said, I know it that God can do it. Amen? So we are believers. Amen. Don't you let none shake your faith. Amen. We're believers. Amen. Jesus didn't promise me that the hard times wouldn't happen. He didn't promise me a life without storms, but he promised to be the captain on board. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so we are grateful that in the midst of everything, God is still God. Amen. He's still God. Amen. All right, well, I got that out the way. Let me, uh, let's do some teaching tonight. Y'all all right? Yes, we are. Amen. We can do some teaching tonight. Uh, that's why I told you we're going to be jumping into this. Like I said, don't miss Sunday, man. Sunday, we're going to address what I believe the Lord is saying to our city right now. Um, and he's saying something to our city right now, too, but I'm going to deal with it more directly Sunday. Yes, so Matthew 5 is where we want to go back to. Matthew 5. Praise the Lord. Matthew 5 is where we want to go back to. He's so wonderful and so worthy. And I love him like that. <laughs> Matthew 5, verse 13. I'm going to say something to my sound ministry because I'm always, I used to fuss at him all the time, but y'all got a brother sounding good tonight. I feel like, I feel like I'm in mega fest. <laughs> Tell seven people to get ready, get ready, get ready. Man, I feel y'all going to make a brother want to preach with this sound. Man, <laughs> Matthew 5 and 13. And the Bible said, <laughs> you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled under the foot of men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Go with me to Mark. Keep your place there. I got to come back there, but I want to go with me real quick to Mark 1. Mark chapter 1. Keep your place there. Don't lose it. Mark chapter 1. Just take a right. And the Bible says in verse 21, Then they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Please go back to Matthew 5. Verse 13, I'm just going to read verse 13. It says, you are the salt of the earth. For a few moments tonight, I'm going to be teaching from the subject, put some flavor on it. Put some flavor on it. Father, now I ain't trying to preach this Wednesday night. I just feel like it in the name of Jesus. 
Have your way. Amen. 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 So if you were with us Sunday, you know that we released our 2020 theme. Uh, you saw it coming in, amen, the big banner that says influence, amen, yeah. influence, okay? Um, and, and the reason why, you know, and of course, you know, um, we're talking about influence and being game changers, and the reason that we have this, uh, I'm, I'm thinking two thoughts right now, but the reason why I believe God is using this as a theme is because what I'm seeing is that as a church, I fully believe that God wants us to influence and an impact every relationship in our lives, every place that we go in our lives, that by the end of 2020, let it be said in Jersey City that Jersey City was better because World Outreach Christian Church was here. Amen. Amen. I, I told you Sunday, I don't believe that God called us here just to have good church. I believe that God wants our church to translate in such a way that it affects the community around us. And who knows, in times like this, uh, we need some people who can influence our community for the good. Amen? And so if you were here Sunday, we started a series entitled Game Changers. Somebody say, I'm a game changer. Amen. Y'all get, get your bracelet? We still got some left, so make sure you get your bracelet. Amen. I'm a game changer. Uh, and these do glow in the dark. Somebody said, no, they don't. We'll turn the lights down low and stop. Praise the Lord. They do glow in the dark. Turn them off. Um, but the purpose of this series, Game Changer, uh, is because it's one thing to have a theme, but I, what I want us to have this going into 2020 is a clear understanding of the power of influence. And then I want us to understand what it means to, to be a game changer from God's perspective, okay? So when we say things like influence or be a game changer, it's not enough to know what that means. We have to take it a step further and understand what does God mean when he says it, okay? Because the truth is that you don't have to be a believer to be a game changer, okay? This Sunday, we, we rolled out a whole lot of different um, people in the world, and we talked about how people like Michael Jackson, you know, he wasn't saved, but God knows he changed the game. Music was never the same after Mike put that hee-hee-hee. It was just everybody started doing it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, and so there's a lot of people uh, in the world who have used their talents, who have used their athletic ability, who have used their resources to, and ideas, philosophies to change the world. Okay? But as believers, one of the things that I love, and I said this Sunday, I'm still doing a little bit of review, is that we get to serve the greatest game changer in history. I told you Sunday that when your birth changes the date, you have changed the game. Amen. That it's 2020 AD. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So when you say the date, you have to think about Jesus, whether you like him or not. That means that he is the ultimate game changer. But when you study his life, you'll see that Jesus not only changed people's conditions, he changed them, number one, natural conditions. He, he was known to change people's natural conditions. When Jesus showed up into town, one of the marks that Jesus had been there, things changed. So when Jesus showed up where the sick work, sick people got healed. Amen. And it was such a it was such a knowing that Jesus had the power to change the game that when he got into town, some people said that he got into a room in a house and the house was so filled that people couldn't even get in it because they understood that if Jesus shows up, things will change. Jesus was such a game changer. If you were blind and got around Jesus, you mess around and started seeing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. And, 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 and there was one section where it was about 5,000 people that had been hanging with him for three days, and they had got so far and forgot to bring food. Jesus said, y'all hungry? Let me change the game. Somebody give me a fish sandwich to watch me work. Amen. Because he, he was a game changer. Somebody say game changer. So it's good to know that Jesus 
Jesus does come to change our natural circumstances, right? Being saved should, should have some level of enhancement in your natural lives, okay? It's okay to be saved and expect God to heal you. Somebody say amen to that, okay? But the thing I, I alluded to Sunday is that if Jesus never does anything about our natural condition, the number one thing he came to change was our spiritual condition. Okay? If he does nothing else, the number one thing he came to do was change your spiritual condition. Because who remembers that before you found Jesus, you know it now, if you didn't know it then, you were slaves to Satan. We operated in what was known as the kingdom of darkness. Amen? But one day Jesus showed up and everything changed. Amen. Jesus such a game changer that he did it at the altar. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm not trying to preach tonight. Amen. But I'm, I'm glad that when I came to the altar, my whole reality was turned upside down. He is a game changer. And not only did he change my spiritual state, he changed my spiritual destiny. Amen. Because I went from going to hell, now heaven is my home. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so Matthew 5 Verses 13 through 16, we just read it. Uh, Jesus gives us two qualities of being a follower of him. And those qualities are we become salt and light in the world. Okay? Salt and light in the world. Now, two things that salt and light have in common is that salt and light are both agents of change. Okay? Whatever you add salt to, it changes the flavor of something. When you add light to something, and especially when you add light uh, in a dark place, it changes the atmosphere. Okay? Somebody say amen to that. Okay? So, what does that mean, being salt and light? Being salt and light are not, those principles are not for yourselves. Okay? Being salt and it's only valuable when you put on something that has no salt. Right? Being light means nothing if you're surrounded by light. But your light is only valuable if it's put into a dark place. What does that mean? That means that salt's purpose is to change something else. That means that light's purpose is to change somebody else's atmosphere. That's important because if we embrace being salt and light, what we'll start doing as believers is stop being so self-centered. Yes, yes. Amen. We'll start to understand that my life is here to enhance the life of somebody else. Can I take a little quick rabbit trail? Because I've come to find out that a lot of the depression people deal with is because their lives are surrounded by self. It is not, it's, well, it's not hard to be depressed if all you think about is you. Hmm? It only take five minutes to look at your life and find something to be depressed about. Hmm? But, but the, old, the old saints were right when they used to say things like, they would, they would allude to us that, that, you, that somebody has it worse than you. Amen. And that's why sometimes we do need to take trips to the hospital. Sometimes we do need to go down and feed the homeless. Because I'm not saying my life is not challenging, but trust you me, somebody is praying for your problems. Amen. Am I talking right? Amen. I know a lot of, uh, I know a lot of married folks. Now, I'm not talking about you and these marriages that's of the devil. I'm just talking about your marriage is not ideal. But you'd be surprised how many single folks wish they had somebody to call the spouse. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. amen. And so one of the things as believers, we have to start seeing our lives being valuable beyond ourselves. As a matter of fact, if salt stays in the shaker, it'll never know its potential. Salt only knows what it can do when you take it out of that shaker and put it on something that needs salt. Is that all right? And so Matthew 28, I feel my help coming on me, Mr. Tony. Matthew 28, verse 19 through 20. 28, verse 19 through 20. The Bible says, go, this is Jesus talking to his followers, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, 
teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. Amen. Okay. So Jesus gives this call to his followers to go and make disciples of all nations. I want you to notice that when he tells his disciples to go make disciples, he's talking to all and not just this elite group. Okay? Because we need to understand that the call to go influence the world or make disciples is a call to every believer. That you don't need to have a title to have influence. Somebody say amen. 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 You, you don't need to be bishop nobody to make change in the world. All you have to be is a true believer. Because the second point I want to make here is that in order to make disciples, you have to first be a disciple. Amen. And, ha and, and there is a difference in being a disciple versus being a believer. Because there's a lot of people that believe he exists, but they don't conform their lives to his existence. Amen. And it's really hard to take somebody into a place that you are not willing to go yourself. Amen. Somebody say, I'm a disciple. And so this call to discipleship, that's why we just came out of this series, deny, die, and do. Because when you put it on, it's easier to give it out. Praise the Lord. So we need to be disciples. Now, when we talk about discipleship, we talked about that, what it means to be a disciple. But discipleship begins with us, okay? We become disciples by following Christ. But our discipleship is incomplete if it never extends beyond us, okay? What am I saying? That salvation, it's good when you get it. But if our salvation never leaves our circumstances, it never influences anybody but us, then our salvation in, in its fullest purpose is never fulfilled, okay? Jesus didn't come just to save us. He came to save us that we might take what he's given us into the world, okay? So there's a lot of people that all they want to do is live saved, live around saved people, and they don't want to deal with nobody who ain't saved. You know what that's called? Heaven. <laughs> it's called heaven. Praise the Lord. But while you on this earth, I, I, I'm getting ahead of myself, but it's okay. Amen. Stop praying that God uh, uh, keep you around people on your job, and, and they all need to be saved. Well, get them saved. But until you do, be the person that be the light. Amen. That bees the light. Praise the Lord. Because you mess around and find out. You work around all saved people if you want to. You're going to find out it ain't what you thought. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so, and so let me, let me give you, praise God, Matthew, uh, is that Matthew? Yeah. Give me uh, Matthew 5 and 13 again, but out of the Message Bible. Okay. Discipleship begins with us, but it's incomplete if it never, if our discipleship never changes, transforms, or influences anyone else but us. So Matthew 5, 13, Message Bible says, let me tell you why you are here. You are here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? Praise God. God says, you're here to be salt. Now, salt has different usages, okay? It's sometimes it's used as a preservative, okay? Salt can also be used to purify. But the, the, the purpose of salt that we are focusing on, which the Bible focuses on here, is its ability to season or change the flavor of what it's added to. Y'all got that? So when God talks about us being salt in this particular chapter, in this particular scripture, he's dealing primarily with the ability to change the flavor of what we are added to, okay? Because I want you to catch something here, and, I, and this is in John 10 and 10. I feel like I'm moving too fast. Am I moving too fast? Am I? Somebody say, yeah, so I'll slow down. No? Sure. Somewhere? I'm going to find my gear in a second. John 10 and 10, 
Listen to what this says. It says, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come, Jesus is saying, that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Did y'all catch that? The thief comes not except to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. The reason I want you to see that is because I want you to understand that neither God nor Satan shows up to be neutral. God nor Satan shows up in your life to be neutral. Satan's not coming just to hang around. When Satan comes into your life, he comes to change something. What does he want to do? He wants to steal, he wants to kill, and he wants to destroy. Please stop playing with Satan and think just because you're having a good time that he didn't come to do anything but hang around. Are y'all still here? Okay. Jesus says, I didn't come to be neutral either. Oh, that's good. Because there's a lot of people that they, they don't expect Jesus to change anything. When Jesus shows up, he said, I didn't just come to be a pal. I came to be a savior. I came to be a Lord. So if I'm in your life, I came to bring change. Are you still here? Amen. And so what we need to understand is that when we belong to Jesus now, so uh, we, we, de- we dealt with this Sunday, Jesus shows up on the earth. And everywhere he went, he changed the game. He laid hands on the sick. They recovered. Somebody had a demon, he cast them out. Amen. Jesus was a bad boy. So now Jesus leaves the earth. Uh Uh-huh. But then he still expects the game to be changed. Help me up in here tonight. And so in order to change the game, he speaks to his body. Because we are the body of Christ. Uh, Did y'all catch that? You didn't catch that. We are the body of Christ. So if, if I can put it in a picture form, the head went to heaven, but the body's still on earth. Ooh, God help me up in here. And that's why he said, these things you see me do, you'll do. Because I'm still laying hands on the sick. I'm just using your hands. I'm still speaking life to the dead. I'm just using your mouth. And so in other words, he's saying, everything I did, I passed the baton and said, now keep it going. So in other words, there's no such thing as a real saint that don't bring change. Huh? You, do you understand the power I feel God in this that you have? Why do you keep walking into sick rooms and, and asking God to do something? God said, I did everything, gave you the power. Why don't you lay your hands on them? Why don't you say something about them? Y'all don't want to talk to me. I, I'll back this up because there are certain people that think when we pray, we are literally saying, God, come do it. There was a guy who was at the, the, at the gate called Beautiful. Huh? And he laid there every day lame, begging for food, begging for money. Peter and John comes along. If you don't know the story, it's in Acts 3. Peter and John comes along, and he asks them for money. And they say, look at us. He looks at them, and Peter said, silver and gold we don't have, but such as we have, we give to you. In the name of Jesus, get yourself up. Rise and walk. Amen, somebody. Because whenever you see an issue that Jesus would fix, you fix it. He, he said, anytime you see something I would have done, you do it. I'm still working in the earth. I'm just waiting on my body to stop being paralyzed. Wake up and realize they got the power to change some stuff. We can do it if we try. Are y'all still here? He changed. He changed the game. He changed the game, Sean. 
And can I calm down a little bit? Y'all got me working tonight. Pray for me. But we are supposed to be game changers. Amen. And so one of the ways, let's get more specific, that Jesus was salt in the world and light in the world. He was salt and light. But I want you to understand that him being salt and light wasn't necessarily because he was doing different things, but sometimes he was salt and light by doing things differently. Y'all stay with me tonight? I said one of the ways that Jesus was salt and light wasn't necessarily by doing different things, but by doing things differently. I got to walk this now. I can't preach this. Because let me tell you some of the misconceptions of reading the Bible. The Bible doesn't live like it reads. The Bible doesn't live like it reads. When you read the Bible, you will think that people in the scriptures every day was just one spectacular miracle after the next. Right? Just every day, just today, something, woohoo, and then tomorrow, woohoo. And what you don't understand is when you read the Bible, something that was one sentence apart could have actually been a year between sentences. Huh? See, we miss this thing because we think it's just today this happened today. Most people, that's not the truth. A lot of what you read in paragraphs were years in between them. Are y'all still here? Uh-huh. Because let me tell you the truth. The truth of the matter is that most people in the Bible lived average lives. Yeah. They lived average lives and they were interrupted by spectacular moments. Ooh, I feel God up in here. So the Bible, Minister Tony, doesn't waste time talking about the average. When have you ever read that Jesus went to the bathroom? But how many of you know he went to the bathroom? Huh? So when you read stories about people, we tend to think about the extraordinary and overlook the average. Noah. When we think about Noah, you know what we think about? Building the ark. But can I give you something? In those times, he wasn't getting paid to build the ark. But he had to raise a family. So that meant that he had to do something else, amen, probably farming to raise his family while he was building the ark. But the Bible says nothing about his everyday mundane job. Moses had family, but the Bible tells us nothing about his two-year-old son waking up in the middle of the night with a fever. It, it doesn't say anything about that. It doesn't tell us how Abraham tucked Isaac in at night. Are y'all still here? As a matter of fact, the story on Jesus is quiet till he's 12. He's two. So, okay, story starts, he's born. Right? And then two years later, we see him again because the wise men show up. See, y'all be the, see, see, when the wise men showed up, he wasn't no baby. He was a toddler. That, that's Bible. Huh? The shepherd showed up when he was born, but the wise men, okay. And then from two to 12, nothing. You had children. Your child did not just sit there for 10 years and do nothing. Then 12, he shows up, teaches a little bit, gets ahead of himself, and he's quiet again for another 18 years. Uh, am I talking? So the average life, hey man, is not what we, what we read about, but it's the thing that are highlighted. Are y'all still here? Huh? Because this is important. Somebody asked me why. Because when we think about being an influencer, when we think about being a game changer, we think about the spectacular. I'm going to change the game because I'm going to cast some demons out. 
I'm going to change the game. Watch me, Facebook, because I'm going to start a worldwide ministry. I'm going to change the game because I'm going to preach the gospel. No. The way you change the game is by how your life, everyday, average life changes because of Jesus. The number one place that your life will have the most impact is in your average, everyday life. Ah, oh, this is so good. I know it's Wednesday night, but I feel like running. Hmm? Let me make my point. Can I make my point? Mark 1, what we read, Minister Tony. Jesus goes into the sab- goes into the temple on the Sabbath. There was nothing spectacular about that statement. It was Sunday. Well, for them, Saturday, but it's, it's a day of worship. What is spectacular about showing up on church on Sunday? Nothing. Shouldn't be anyway. Praise the Lord. And he teaches the word in church on the Sabbath. What is so such a big deal on that? He teaches or reads from the same scriptures that everybody else read upon. So what is spectacular about that? So he starts to teach from the same scripture, Sean, that everybody else is teaching from on the Sunday or the Sabbath, rather. He's in the church where everybody else goes to church. And so there's nothing spectacular about him until he opens his mouth. And when he opens his mouth, let me show you verse 22. This is the message Bible. Am I doing all right tonight? It says, and they were surprised at his teaching. Stop right there. He's teaching from the same book that they're teaching from. Are y'all still here? So, so, so he, somebody else teaches this. He stands up and teaches this, and they were surprised at his teaching. Let's read further. It says, because it was so forthright, so confident, not quibbling and quoting like the religious scholars. Huh? So this lets me know, Minister Tony, that they were astonished not by what he taught, but by how. Y'all a good class tonight? Are y'all still here? Huh? They were saying, it's not that we've not heard this. We've just never heard it like this. Please stay with me. Huh? Are y'all still here? Huh? Because I told you, what did I say? It wasn't that he did different things. He just did things differently. Are y'all still here? So his influence was not that he did something different, but how he did it was so differently that it changed the room. Stay with me. Somebody say amen up in here. huh? Because I'm trying to give you something now. Don't leave here thinking I have to do something different in order to have influence. No, sometimes you should do the same thing you've been doing, but do it in such a different way that it releases influence in every place you go. Help me, Holy Ghost. Huh? Because some people use their Christianity to do something different instead of doing things differently. Let me explain what I'm saying, huh? I know people that use Christianity and, and hear that God has better for them. So they interpret that as an excuse to quit their jobs. God want to bless me. Oh, well, this job, ain't. I hated this job anyway. I'm going to quit. And maybe what God was saying is that your increase is where you work. But if you work differently, you'll get a promotion. If you work differently, somebody might give you a... Y'all... Huh? So now your employer can be influenced by your work. Because you work in a different fashion. God help me. Huh? Don't, Don't tell me you saved and you're the worst employee on the job. I'm going to take a drink of water because y'all looking at me like you're looking at me right there. Hmm? Huh? Say folks should be the ones that, that take 14 minutes, 55 second breaks for their 15 minute breaks. Because we, we ain't waiting to 501. Y'all quiet up in here. Huh? 
Uh, see, I'm losing them already, Go Pastor. I, I feel I feel the feel the shift going on, huh? Same folks should just be barely making it through the door, punching the time clock, or calling somebody and say, "Hey, punch me in." Okay, I'm gonna let that go. I'm gonna let that go because I can feel I'm losing the crowd. I can feel I'm losing y'all. I feel like temptation. Ooh, baby, I'm losing you. <laughs> There are people that are tired of their families and use God as an excuse to neglect their families. Hey, help me, Holy Ghost. Because they'll say stuff like this. Uh, you know, I got to serve God. So that's why I ain't got time for y'all. Because I got to, y'all quiet, I'm losing them. Huh? I ain't got time to cook and make sure y'all got something to eat. Get out of my way. I'm going to church. Okay. I thought y'all was, I'm sorry. Yeah? Huh? But, but instead of letting the God in you influence your family, huh? when you show up, you should bring some salt with you. I didn't say bring judgment with you. I said bring salt with you. Amen. Because I can get judgment in the courtroom. Y'all don't want to talk to me. Amen. Come on. I feel God pushing me. Because the Bible said Jesus Christ did not come to condemn the world. Amen. So we should be condemning our family. Y'all ain't no good. That's why all y'all need to go to church. And they look at you. That's why we don't come to church. Because if you just mean at the cookout, how mean you going to be when I get to church? Amen. Just give me some salt. Hey, okay. I'm gonna call and show me a reason to come to the house of God. Yes. Try. I know folks that use getting saved because they can't stand these spouse. Oh, I better take a drink of water on this. And 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 and, and, and especially if they got an unsaved spouse. Who walk lightly past the shot because they might throw their shoes at you tonight. And then they come across the scripture, Miss Lorraine, be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. There it is. I was waiting on that. <laughs> I was waiting on that because you ain't saved. And the Bible says that I don't have to be unequally yoked with you. The Bible also says that if you have an unbelieving spouse, y'all don't want to talk to me. And, 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 and they don't mind your faith. Come on now. Amen. Amen. Come on. It says the sanctified wife. God help me, Raycorn, because they ain't helping me up in here. Huh? And as a matter of fact, ladies, see, I'm going to lose. We're going to be an all-male church after this. After this. We're going to be an all-male church after this. Because the Bible tells the same spouse, you ain't going to win him with your words. You can't preach the hell out of him. It says with your chase conversation. Say, I knew it. Amen. Amen. It says your demeanor ought to be so beautiful that he's like, my God, does God do this for you? I'm coming. As a matter of fact, your family, friends, job, and everybody else should be able to say, Jesus, they are better because they got you. Oh, God, I can't. I can't. I can't. I ain't getting no help tonight. I'm almost done. See, y'all think I'm pretty. Uh, I'm almost done because I ought to give some more scripture. I'm almost done. Because, listen, it's not about always doing something different, but doing what you do. Salt doesn't turn steak into chicken. Huh? <laughs> Salt does not turn steak in the chicken. It enhances. It, does that make sense? Hmm? So as salt in the world, I, I got to let you go. Give me some music. I'm, I'm done. I'm for really done. I'm really done. This, I'm really done. I'm sorry. Y'all used to be preaching 45 minutes. This messes all y'all up. Like, give it. I'm done. No, I'm really I am. This is, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Y'all greedy. Huh? Fire me. Yeah. Listen. <laughs> Salt. Because when we, when we think about, I feel God, when we think about changing people, 
we it's almost like Kenyatta, we want to exchange people. Uh, it's like an exchange. Can I tell you this and I'm going to let you go? I'm going to give it to you. I'm, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give you the, like Anita Baker. I'm trying to give you the best I got. Last, listen, let me tell you what salt looks like. Personal testimony. So when, when God was coming after me, uh, and he finally had got me, he had backed me into a corner. So you know what you do when you can't run anymore, you try to give God excuses. So excuse one, God, I don't know if you, you sure you want me? That's what I said, is you sure? I said, God, listen, you know I'm a mess. <laughs> he said, I got grace for that. <laughs> you know, he ain't saying in those words, but basically what he was saying is that I'm not scared of your mess. So I'm going to make a lot of mistakes, Jesus, because I know you only have the perfect people. <laughs> huh? I'm going to make a lot. See, y'all heard what I said. A lot of mistakes. See, I was up front because I was trying to talk him out of me. He was like, okay, cool. You heard what I said, Jesus? I'm going to make a lot of mistakes. He said, we're cool. So I said, I got him now. I said, I got him now. Because my idea, Minister Tony, of church people, can, I'm going to just be honest with y'all, was some corny cats. Church, thank you, thank you. Somebody over there said facts. Because see, some of y'all only know this church. And you don't know Christians can be corny because your pastor got so much swag. I understand that. But, but, but if this, y'all ain't say amen when I said your pastor got swag. Y'all better say something to me. Over. Looking at me like, no, you don't. Yes, I do. Because when you got it, you don't need nobody else to tell you. I know it. Look at the socks tonight. Look at the socks tonight, y'all. <laughs> Just kidding. So uh, I said, I got them now. I said, God, all these Christian guys I see, they're corny. The dudes, all of them wore button-up shirts to the top. <laughs> Back when I got sick, I didn't own one suit. I, I, I didn't own a suit. I didn't own a tie. And I'm like, I can't go to church. I ain't got nothing to wear. And I said, so here's, so let me close this. So let me tell you how the Holy Ghost checked me. He said, Sharon, I said, yeah. He said, um, now he didn't use the word swag, but he said, let me, he said, Sharon, let me, let me, let me ask you something. He said, where do you think your personality came from? Where do you think your gifting came from? Where do you think your sense of humor came from? Because anybody ain't funny. I said, I guess it came from you. He said, and it did. He said, Sharon, I didn't come to cramp your style. I want to use your style for my glory. Y'all still here? And so... It was almost like he knew I was going to ask another question. He said, no, I'm going to prove it to you. I said, well, prove it then. There's a guy in the Bible named Peter. Peter is fishing all night, and it doesn't work. Jesus shows up, gives him a blues clue of where the fish are, catches all the fish, and then listen to what Peter says. Jesus, get away from me. I am unworthy and unclean. Jesus said, get up, boy. He says, because... I'm going to use what you know for my glory. You are a fisherman, but you're about to be a fisher of men. And everything you know about fishing, I want you to use for my glory. And everything you learned about fishing in the right places, fishing at the right time, fishing with the right bait, you going to use that for me. As a matter of fact, when Peter cut a joker's ear off, Jesus said, yo, Peter, put your sword up. Y'all quiet. Peter was cussing, and Jesus never rebuked him for it. Now I ain't saying you about to be cussing, but but Jesus chose Peter because he wanted the gangster on his team. Yeah, he said, Peter, no, there's something about you that I like. Don't don't rob God trying to be saltless, huh? You bless God when you let God use you, but for his glory. Be 
you a mother, be a mother. But now be a mother with some salt on you. You a, you a husband and wife? Be a husband and wife. Because I got a little bit of time. Can I just, because y'all know your pastor like giving testimony. Can I just throw a 30-second testimony out there? Come here, go, Pastor. Because I'm done for real. Come up here. Stay with me, baby, for this one. Oh, you writing down my notes? That girl, she typing. She writing my notes down. Huh? All I need in this life without sin is me and my girlfriend. <laughs> down the ride to the very end. Look for me. Young, B, come on, B. <laughs> That's Becca. That's my B. That's my B. Becca. That's my B. That's my B. So, <laughs> so, so we were married. Yeah, no, this is going to bless you. I ain't going to put you out there like that. We were married for two years. And I was just a very, very horrible husband. Just that's I'm going to say that. And I got saved. And when I came home, I was all excited. Hey, hey, I'm saved. But I had put her through so much. She had a hard time getting excited. So she just was basically, okay. We'll see. You know, that's, she didn't say those words, but her attitude was she didn't get excited. But she watched me. Am I talking right? She watched me in moments that I would get. Because when you first get saved, you want people that you love to just be, ha ha. You know what I'm saying? Come on now. And so I come home all excited, and she was, man, <laughs> feeling some kind of way. And then she didn't, sh I like, so I, I was saved two whole days, 48 whole hours, and she still didn't believe it. I'm like, I was saved two whole days, don't you? So by day three, no, day four, I was, man, I was mad. But even in my anger, I couldn't go back to sin. God help me up in here. Huh? I was mad, but I was still at home. Be angry and sin not. And so after, see, sometimes people can't see you saved until you get into the fire. Jesus. We crying about the fire, and the fire is just a light to spotlight the light. That's what happened with the three Hebrew boys. When they got thrown in the fire, the dude that threw them in the fire brought them all out because he said, I see the fourth man in there. And he said, no God is God, but you're God. That's a whole nother teaching. So after about a week or so, she was like, uh, I think I'm coming to church with you. I was like, for real? She was like, yeah. What she was saying was that something's changed. No, you came to the city with me after a couple of weeks. That was like week two. Yeah. Now, you didn't come to Zion what, by the time we got to Zion. But you came to the city. Okay, I'm giving you some. Stop messing this up. I'm always bigging you up right now. You, you sick you Parker on me first. Week. Yeah, we ain't going to talk about I let Parker out. She's looking at y'all because, see, now I got to tell it. See, tell, tell your first lady, just let the man tell it. Because after about five days of her not getting saved, I went to church one night, and I told my friend, I said, I'm going to kill her. I said, I'm going to kill her dead when I get home. I did. And then he said, no. Nah. He said, no, nah, brother. He said, listen, man, we going to. <laughs> See, I got to tell him that. He said, he said, Chiron, he said, listen, man, because then I got a prophetic word that night at a service, and, and the prophetic word was God's going to give you a new wife. Thank God I knew he meant this one. I knew what he meant. So me and my friend going home, now I'm going to have to take this detour. All the way back to my house, he said, man, Sharon, you heard what the word of God said? God going to give you a new wife. And, and by the way, man, she ought to thank God she got a man of God now. And she ought to, man, she ought to be in this with you, man. We're going to talk to him when we get to the house. I was like, yeah. We walked upstairs. Go past was sitting on the couch watching a movie, smoking a cigarette. 
I walked in, Parker walked in behind me, cut a TV off the last five minutes of the movie. He said, sister, we need to talk. You got you a man of God, and you need to such and such, and I'm sitting there like. <laughs> he said, now we gonna pray, and he prayed, and I was, and she was looking at me the whole time like. Wait. <laughs> yes, she did. Wait. <laughs> so then he, he said, I'm leaving now, and I was looking at him like, please. I had, I had that one tear coming down my eye. See, now I got to tell her. She said, let me tell you something. I was, she said, um, I'm going to go to this church. But don't you ever. I was like, I don't care. Just come to church. I don't care. Just come to church. So she came to church. See? Okay, now you feel better. She like wanted to tell the whole story. And she got saved because the man of God made her get saved. Amen. He made her. He walked to, he said, see, y'all are blessed. He walked to, he, he used to walk down the aisle and say, excuse me, ma'am, are you saved? And you'd be like, uh, he said, no, you don't know. Come on up here. I'll, I'll have to do that one day. Hey, let me, um, y'all say? Okay, let me, um, so man, y'all make me mess up my story. Okay, but what drew her to church wasn't my friend. It was my salt. You understand what I'm saying? She saw something that said, this is not him. I know who I married, but something got on him. Amen. Huh? When I went to work the week of salvation, after I got saved, I was there like two, three days. And one of my coworkers said, they called you by your last name. They say, Richardson. I was like, yeah, what's up? You all right? I was like, yeah. He said, something. Well, what, you, what happened to you? I said, nothing. What you talking about? He said, nah, man, something happened to you, brother. Something happened. He said, you've been here three days and you ain't cussed. I was like, and I didn't even realize it because I was in the Navy. So you cussing like a sailor, put it together. I was like, really? He said, man, three days and you ain't cussed. And he said, some your demeanor's different. He was like, you just, so I, I was trying not to put it out there. I said, well, man, you know, I, I started going to church. He said, it ain't that. Because I done seen people go to church. That ain't what happened to you. I said, uh, I became a born again believer. He said, I knew it. But without even having, because salt ain't got to announce itself. Huh? I won't try to, I didn't go to work the next day. With, I didn't go to work with my big Bible. I had no big Bible. I had no big Christian t-shirt. I'm saved in the Lord now. Don't cuss around me. I just brought Jesus with me. And I didn't even know that I had been that transformed because you ain't got to work. Help me, Holy Ghost, to be salt. All you got to do is accept him and he makes you salty. So I'm in right there. Is that all right tonight? Huh? Is that all right? Thank you. Hallelujah. As we go into the world, let's make sure that we add salt to everyone we meet to every place we go, to everything we do, simply by doing what we normally do, but doing it in a godly way. Tell your neighbor, put some salt on it. Let's pray. Father in the name. Well, before I pray, because I don't have to pray, but so many times. As we're praying tonight, uh, well, we thank you for the word. Let me do that. God, thank you for the word. Seal this word in the hearts of your people. Amen. I pray that those watching, those here, that we will start to walk out of here and let your light shine. God, we want to be who we were, but we want to be it in a different way. Yes, God, there are some people that you might call to do something different. Yeah, you, you, you can. But the biggest place of influence is not in the spectacular it's letting the supernatural hit the average. My God. Hallelujah. My God. If we allow your power to touch everything we do, Hallelujah. then everything we do will be exposed to the salt. We thank you for doing it, God. Have your way. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now put those hands together one more time and bless the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well. It is giving time in the house of God. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. amen. 
we we thank and praise God, guys, for every opportunity uh, that we get to give. Amen. We we are. And we want to make sure, guys, uh, you know, I don't even though like last Sunday, you know, I told you, man, I don't like to break the flow. But one thing God has spoken to my heart recently is that giving is in the flow. Because it it's just as much it's, it's, it's just as much a part of our worship as our praise and worship. And so, listen, man, don't don't take it for granted the opportunities you get to give to the Lord. Amen. So you watch me Facebook Live, you know, you can go to the website, man, and, and give that way. And if you're here, man, you know, we have several ways to give via text, your old school envelope. You can go to the bookstore, but we want you to be a part. Amen. Of what God is doing. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. amen. Way of a, announcements. Um, what do you have, baby? Um, the very first announcement that I have is I want to remind everyone about this Sunday. It's our WOCC State of the Church address. It is open to every member of WOCC, and we really, really, really encourage you to be here on Sunday afternoon. Amen. The meeting will begin at 2 p.m. It will be about a 90-minute meeting. At the most. At, at the most, a 90 minutes, so that's an hour and a half meeting. Uh, refreshments will be available for those who are staying. But again, I must stress, it is for members only. Yeah. Amen. So if you are a member of WOCC, sometimes folks are members we didn't know, so let us know. <laughs> Amen. Please let, let me let into that. Know. I just want to know. Glory be to God. Let us know. Like coming but, home um, with a kid, who you is. <laughs> right. But um, but it's very important because Pastor will be um, going into a little bit more detail on our vision for 2020, yeah. some things that we uh, accomplished in 2019, and then just some things to just be uh, having you prayerful about as members of WOCC uh, and, and what God is doing uh, in our midst. Amen. Amen. Um, so we want you to make sure for officers and training please be reminded that we will be here on sunday morning at 8 45 uh so 8 45 officers in training and we thank god for what he's doing in he's our officers. raising up some you wonderful should, people you should definitely be um if you're a member of wcc be praying as god is um training and instructing and developing these officers because as he does it that means that we're growing and we're Amen. expanding and god is going to be able to do more and so we thank god for that so that's what I have in the way of announcements in regards to this Sunday. The following Sunday, which is Sunday the 22nd of December, it is the Sunday before Christmas, uh, and we are going to be celebrating, amen. We, we are, this year, um, we do not have a Christmas Day service, but it will be back in 2020 and thereafter. But um, on Sunday the 22nd of December, we will celebrate, amen, because without the birth of Christ, there would be no death of Christ and there will be no salvation so Amen. we um, definitely celebrate this season and we thank God for all the other things that we do but he truly is the reason for the season um, on that Sunday uh, we have a couple of things going on number one it is the Sunday that we wear our ugly slash festive Christmas sweater outfit amen we ask you all to be festive if you would like there is a competition amen and there are first second and third prizes and so we're excited we have some amen. that are champions every year and they're coming but we have some that said they're coming for them amen so we're excited about that and we have a great time celebrating that and then afterwards it's uh pastor and I we have an entire treat buffet of candies and and I'm working on my song for this year and those that were there that last year had a whole song for all I the kids I had a song I'm working on and hot new chocolate one. and hot chocolate exactly so it's a big treat buffet candy uh, cupcakes and hot cocoa with all the trimming amen so be patient and get in line and go through that line uh, and and do that amen and just reminder again that we do not have service that Wednesday and then New Year's that's, Eve. Uh, that's not too many oh, announcements. Yeah. No, no, New Year's We're about to be another five minutes. No, just New Year's Eve. Mark your calendar. Mark your calendar. Yeah. yeah. Um, last, I, I put out a post about, I don't know why, uh, Ruby, you must have been in my spirit, but I just sort of felt like the New Year's was incomplete without T-shirts. I don't got so, dang, so, so, so used to T-shirts. So what we're doing is that if you are interested in getting a, get a T-shirt for New Year's Eve, we're going to open up um, the ability to order one between now and 20, the 22nd, but the money must be in first, right? We have to get at least 50 T-shirts to get a decent price 
in order to make this order worthwhile. If we don't have 50 t-shirts, then we're not going to get, we'll refund the money. But we're going to give you, starting now, up until the 22nd, to order and get your money in. Um, but, it, I, you know, but if we get at least 50, t- 50 people, we will have t-shirts New Year's Eve, so Ruby can be happy. I think, I think she was praying and fasting about these t-shirts. Amen? Amen. And All right. this will be based on the 2020 theme? Yeah, this 2020 theme. The t-shirts say Game Changers. So... So it says game changer, okay? All right, stand to your feet. I have a few last things we're going to pray, and then we're going to let you go home. Amen? Uh, in way of praying, just some, so we've had some, um, we've had some unfortunate deaths, uh, family members of members of the church. Uh, Miss Lorraine is here tonight, and she had an aunt that passed away uh, yesterday or the day before yesterday. So please keep her family uh, in prayer. Matter of fact, before she leaves tonight, make sure you love up on her. Uh, and let her know that we're here for you. We're standing with you. Amen. We believe in God. And then today, unfortunately, Brother Gentry's mother passed away. Um, and it was, it was unexpected. Uh, it was an unexpected passing. So um, I got to be with there with the family and things. But just definitely, you know, these are times where you really need your church family. Yes. Amen. Amen. So he told me, he gave me permission to let you guys know. If you do know him, if you have a relationship, you know, just send him a text. I sent him a call, but just let them know you, you love them that we're praying for them, amen, because yes. you guys know, uh, you know, that when, when death is never easy, yeah. it's never easy. Uh, I don't care how long somebody you love have lived, it's never long enough, but it's, it's extremely hard when it wasn't expected. Yes. And then it's worse when it's your parent, right? So, um, so definitely we're going to keep, keep him in prayer. Um, so I just want to put that out there tonight and we're going to just, you know, and like I said, once again, guys, one of the things that I want to make sure we do, we're talking about influence in the outside, but this year on the inside, let's be family this year. Yes, sir. Amen. Let's not just be members. Let's be family. Yes. Amen. And so don't just go home and live our separate lives. Somebody else needs your encouragement. Hallelujah. Somebody else needs your smile. Somebody else needs your pick-me-up, amen? So let's be there for one another, amen? I said it in the beginning. I'm going to say it again. Please pray for us. Pray for your pastor. Um, You know, I'm a leader in this community, amen? Uh, And so I don't mind that role, but I'm just, you know, right now, just trying to hear the mind of God um, as it relates to what happened recently, yesterday. And so we've been, I've been in contact, but I'm just really being prayerful. Uh, This Sunday, God has already spoke to me about prophetically speaking to the circumstances so this Sunday we're going to be ministering what we're ministering but more directly as it relates to what we've seen uh, so just but keep us in prayer amen we want to be we want to be a we want to be a light in this city yes, amen sir. and so I just believe that God's going to do it in a special way amen, yes, sir. amen. all right let's pray and we're going to let, let God's people go home amen. well father in the name of Jesus once again we thank you for what our eyes have seen what our ears have heard. Thank you, God, for, you know, Lord, we, once again, we, we, it's not too much prayer. We lift up our city. We really do, God. And we just lift up everyone who was involved. Everyone. Everyone. Of course, we lift up the police officer. Of course, we lift up the, the, the Hasidic community. But God, even the person who perpetrated the crime, something happened to that person that would make him do a thing like that. It's, it's so easy to dismiss people who do bad things, but that person has a family too. And they have a family that might even be afraid to mourn in public because of the hate they might receive. God, we're the church. We can't pick and choose who we pray for. We got to pray for everybody. Could have been us. God, if we did half the stuff we thought, People would put us under the prison. So we pray for our city tonight because we pray for the narrative, that the narrative remains truthful. Hallelujah, that the narrative remains truthful. Jersey City is not a bad city. It's a beautiful place. And even the neighborhoods that they call bad, it's not as bad as what the media makes it out to be. There's some beautiful people in these neighborhoods, God. So we're not throwing anybody under the bus tonight. We're, we're here to be a light in darkness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we, we pray and, and we lift up Father God, Miss Lorraine. God, for her family now, we, we ask you, God, she, she might be the only light in that family. 
But God, I ask you to let her light shine so much that God, that those family members who, who have tried to sneak away will find themselves back in the house of God. Huh? That those family members who, who said they wouldn't come to church will be right here front and center. She doesn't want to have to come to church by herself. So I thank you, God, for extended family members and strengthen her. Strengthen her, God. It's not always easy to be the light, but strengthen her. Thank you, God. We, we lift up Brother Gentry and that entire family. Maybe they're watching tonight. I'm not sure, but brother, we, we pray for you. We pray for you. We, we pray that, that your heart not be shattered. Uh, we know your heart is broken, but we pray that it not be shattered. Uh, we pray that you not lose hope. We pray that you not lose faith. Because if there's one thing out of this, your mother was a believer. Hallelujah. Uh, and to be absent from the body, it is to be present with the Lord. And family, I told Gentry today, I, when my grandmother passed away and people asked me, what was I going to do about it? And I said, you know, I've never been to heaven, but I've heard stories of people who did go and not one of them ever wanted to come back. It must be something sweet on the other side. And so we thank you that she might have gotten her, earth, her heavenly reward way earlier than any of us would have ever expected. But she's living and breathing in the presence of the Lord. And so God comfort that family with these words. I thank you for World Outreach Christian Church. That 2020 will be the best year of our existence thus far that this world will be better because we're here. Hallelujah. Huh? That our city will be transformed you, because, we're because we're here. Lord, I ask you to bless, use, and move in our lives Hallelujah. as only you can. Only you can. And as we do, we promise to give you all the praise, all the honor and glory in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Come on, put those hands together and bless the Lord one more time, and let's get ready to sow. And I ask you to hug somebody, love somebody, and tell them, man, I, I really do love you, and you can't do